What's up, guys? So this is going to be marketing conditions for uh, June 26, 2020. So I put a poll out yesterday, and you guys, uh, well, most of you guys said all the above, but uh, real estate was number one. So I'm going to talk. I'm going to start with that, and then go in a little bit into stocks, and uh, we'll we'll go from there. So uh, to start off with uh, the real estate market, let's see. Um, well, the the we got to go off of what we know. So we know that there was a spike uh, about last month, a 13 percent, as as you saw. Uh, um, certain states and certain areas start uh, easing off um, uh, the pandemic uh, regulations, uh, I guess, stay-at-home motors. There you go, right? So you see that there's pent-up demand. And uh, when you're looking at stuff on an economic scale, there's, there's, a, there's a macro scale and there's a micro scale. But a macro scale means a bigger picture, and a micro is like a microscope, like, you know, smaller, right? So on a micro scale, I mean, you got to remember – you know, I have a lot of friends like in the military and uh, they can't move, they can't do orders and they buy and sell homes all the time around there. So that's one little segment. Well, think about the rest of the world and the rest of life, like, you know, people getting married, people, uh, you know, getting new jobs, people uh, moving to their first jobs, people moving cities for better opportunities, like all that's been halted. So, of course, you're going to see a spike there. And I think the people that were in a position to buy homes, uh, it's a little bit different. See, when you're, you know, let's, when, when are you ready to buy a home um, or when should you buy a home? said that backwards when should you buy home is when you're ready right and when you know you can afford it and you're at a certain spot in life that you you, you could purchase a home so single family homes i think will be fine um but i'm expecting at the end of the year to if if this lockdown order stays prolonged if we continue to pump out unemployment numbers and people continue to not uh be able to go back to work or to create or to uh do things that will produce you know an economical boom then of course I, I I fully intend to see a single family home uh, decline uh, by the end of the year, and uh, I I wouldn't bank on more than like five or ten percent. Uh, just you know people trying to move. You got to remember, guys, real estate really lags. You know it's really not reflect like there's there's the stock market, and that moves a lot because the stock market is viewed in the future. So the price you're paying for a stock today is not essentially the value of, of that stock today. You're paying for the future value. And if you want to pay, you're like, screw that. I want to pay today's value. Then you'd be value investing, right? So, but majority of the stock market, it's called the futures market because, you know, it's in the future. And uh, real estate in a sense is kind of like that, uh, but it's it's really even more removed uh, from, from, from the everyday economy, right? Because it doesn't, it doesn't really factor in, unfortunately, uh, I don't know, like a politically correct way to say this, but it doesn't really factor in people that can afford it. You, you know, it only factors in people that can afford it. And the market stays pretty stable because we're not expecting huge booms or busts, you know, in our economy. It's not really it's not really built like that. You know, the stock market has huge booms or busts. Right. But your local neighbor that owns like a, you know, a, a garden service or that, you know, um, started his you know, automotive shop. He's not going to go bankrupt overnight, you know, so that there, there's the real estate. That's where the stability is. It takes a long time before, not a long time, but like, you know, in stock market terms, you know, it could take up to six months to a year for what happened at the stock market to go into what happened in the real estate and in between before it even gets into the real economy, right? So it's like a huge, it's, it's a lag. So that's why I don't see prices dropping like crazy, you know, right away. And when it comes to investment properties, um, you know, I'm always going to say this every time issues like this come up and uh, sorry for being boring, but... The truth of the matter is all about the deal, guys. If you got a good deal lined up, uh, you're gonna want to buy the deal, you know. Uh, and to and ever to everyone, it's you know a good deal is different. You gotta you know look at what you want as an investor. For me, I like to buy uh, a property that at least gives me ten percent, at least gives me ten uh, percent returns. So if I'm putting a hundred thousand dollars down, I, I want to be able to make at least ten thousand dollars, you know, a year off that property. And for me, that's more of like a cushion built in, um, because remember uh, historically. Um, like you look at the modern economy, I don't really like going too far back because I think a lot of things have changed. But even from the 1990s, when we saw the dot com bubble bust, and even the two, two uh, 2008 to 2010, that whole financial crisis and the whole financial meltdown, rents held pretty steady, guys. Um, it, you remember, you know, majority of our wealth isn't on Wall Street. You know, so when you see stock market doing bad or whatever, that doesn't indicate what me and you are doing as as regular regular people. You know. Uh, so, uh, rents don't decline 20, 30% in a, in a, in a year. Uh, they don't, if, if anything, uh, rents, they stagnant eh, maybe they cut 5% at the most extreme, maybe 10 in certain areas, you know, that were already extremely overpriced, but you know, your average 
your average rental is just ha holding the average uh, American citizen. Uh, you know, like people that are still working today that are essential and, and that are, are, are going about their lives. And uh, it's, so you don't really see a decline. So, so when, you, when you're buying a rental and uh, you, you, you're pricing it around 10%, you know, it, even if you buy, it baked in a 10% a uh, decrease in rents, I mean, it's going to hurt, but that's really still coming like, out of your profits. You get what I'm saying? That's why you're buying with that safety. So uh, if anything, in downturns, people turn to rentals so you could see appreciation in your property. Because if they pull out of the market, they pull out of the stock market and they're like, man, I got to park my money somewhere. Well, let me put a little bit into rentals. Let me put a little bit into bonds or supposed used to be bonds or gold now, you know, or maybe some Bitcoin. But, you know, you, you usually see an appreciation of rentals. And uh Long story short, that was, you know, I'm just went off on a tangent there, but you want to buy if the deal's good, you know, and uh, I was just what, finishing up the uh, Jon Stewart uh, video with uh, Joe Rogan's podcast, and he's like, you know, he made a pretty good, interesting point when he started the show. He went through, like, the Iraq War, uh, you know, he went through, you know, 9-11, he went through Ferguson, he went through all these times, and guys, in our lifetime, this is, you know, COVID right now sucks, absolutely, but this isn't going to be the last time something like this happens. And this is not going to be the last time that, you know, an event like, uh, you know, the murder of George Floyd happens or or a terrorist attack is going to happen or whatever, because we're human and we're going through life. And uh, this this too shall pass. Right. But every single time moments like this in life happen, it presents opportunity and it also presents, uh, you know, a little bit of fear in people and um, in, 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 in a sense of like you're looking for way to protect your assets right so to kind of it, it, it's a way to it, it rebalances things right so you know for rentals if you got a good deal pull the trigger guys you're not gonna you're never gonna do bad with rentals when it comes to the stock market if there's a company out there that you really like and you've done your homework on it just continue to build positions and i would push my buying time back a little bit you know like i said if a, a, a very very conservatively if you, you know, I'd buy 5% increments. So if there's a company you really, really loved and you had $1,000, I'd buy 50 bucks, you know, this month. And I would, I would have done it originally like every two weeks. Now I'd be like, hey, I really don't know what the heck's going on with this market. Let me extend it out a month. So then a month from now, you buy another 5% of the capital that's left. Wait another month, another 5% of the capital that's left. And, you know, you can stretch that out uh, well over, you know, about a 20 month period. So over the course of a couple of years, uh, roughly a couple of years, you're going to have a really good idea of what that company's worth and what what price you should you should be in at and i would just continue to use that judgment um you know i mentioned the the banks and the federal reserve uh, doing the stress test and uh, capping dividends for uh, banks i i have complete faith so far in our monetary system it's it's going to go as far as we can let it go and uh it's a house of cards uh there's there's no denying that that you know we're we're printing money and uh you know we're kicking the can down the road but you know, a uh, smart man once told me they could be right or they could be wrong, you know, way longer than we could be right. So it's kind of hard to go against, you know, the Federal Reserve and, the, and, and their policies. So uh, for now, we have to just play with it. There's it's just been, you know, this week has been crazy, right? Because you see the more more cases break out for COVID and it's got a lot of people shook. And, uh, you know, before I made this video, I watched some uh, uh, 1918 Spanish few uh, documentaries and, and comparisons to kind of see hey, what's, what, what can we do? Or what's, you know, what's the, uh, what, what can we learn from there to here? Long story short, and the Spanish flu uh, summary wrap up, it, it was a disease that ended up going into the uh, lung. And uh, then the white blood cells attacked the lung and that caused like fluids and everything to back up. And all of a sudden, you uh, ended up coughing, uh, you ended up coughing, uh, or dying, dying because uh, coughing, you ended up dying because you, can, you couldn't breathe, right? Uh, we've seen similarities of that with COVID. Um, uh, we've seen it go through the heart. And, you know, the biggest conspiracy was is now we're on the second wave in a, in a sense, right? Uh, Spanish flu, there was like over three plus. I think it went up to like four plus and it lasted over three years. So my big thing is COVID's going to be here to stay, guys. This is not going to be something that, hey, this is going to go away. Uh, these are going to be trying times for, you know, uh, how our leaders react, how we react as people, how we react as a humanity. Uh, but business, guys, even if we restarted from zero, business is business. Business at its core fundamental uh, principles is just uh, allocation of capital, which is time. Time is money. Literally is money. It's just 
you know, you, someone else is paying you for your time to get a task done. So a corporation is going to pay you, you know, to get something done and then they're going to give it to somebody else. That's eventually going to save them time because that product or service is going to be beneficial. And then they get that money and you get a piece of it, right? Basic structure. And uh, that that's never going to stop. So as long as you're investing in sound companies that you believe are going to be here 10 years from now, you're going to be fine. So uh, I wanted to talk a little bit more about the whole politics stuff, but you know, it's Friday and, uh, you know, I, I think let's, uh, I'm going to make a video a little bit later this week, uh, maybe tomorrow, maybe Sunday to get more into it. Cause it's, there's a lot to talk about there. So I just want to give you guys a little bit of a market update, real estate update, and just give my thoughts and opinions on that and keep it trying to keep it as short as I can. So, you know, uh, I hope, uh, if anything, I instored a little bit of confidence in you. Uh, but you know, it's always nice to hear that voice that says, don't worry. And <laughs> to me right now, I'm not really that worried. Uh, whatever's going to happen is going to happen. You, you can't control that. All you can control is your actions, you know, trade responsibly, look at deals responsibly and uh, have faith that you're, you're going to be doing the right thing, the right thing, you know, get everyone's, not everyone's opinion, but just get the right people's opinions, you know, analysts or whatever, when you're buying a stock and, and do your own research on it. And when you're buying a rental, the numbers are the numbers, guys, that's it. Take the emotion out of it. That's the hardest thing to do, but you got to take the emotion out of it. And, and you'll be fine. Uh, have a good weekend, guys. And oh, got to 500 members. If you guys could share this with uh, at least, uh, or members, followers, whatever, share this with one person, I'd really appreciate it.